So check this thing out. I have been obsessed with this camera all weekend. We just moved into this new place. And while we were unpacking one of Carrie's boxes full of sentimental stuff, you know, old yearbook, old photographs, came out this guy. And depending on which generation you grew up in, you might be familiar with one of these. And holy crap, this can store up to four hours of video if you record it in that long play mode. But the thing to keep in mind with these is that they do not last forever. They do degrade over time. So you really want to try to digitize it soon and as possible before it's too late. So knowing that the first thing I did when I saw this camera was I popped in a couple tapes to see if there was any footage still remaining on these tapes. It was just a fuzzy white screen. Now I was kind of bummed and I thought ah, those tapes are probably too old. But then I remembered that you're supposed to run a head cleaner through these cameras once in a while. So something like this. I found this on eBay and ran this tape through the camera for like 30 seconds. And then suddenly camera started working fine. All the tapes, the footage was still there. That's what I'm talking about. And the other thing I ordered was this thing, clear click video video to digital 2.0. I picked this up for 139 bucks on Amazon and I'll throw a link down there in the description. And there's definitely cheaper ways to do this. What I liked about this was how simple it was. So check it out. We got that old school analog yellow, red and white. So really all you got to do is figure out how to get your analog signal into this. And then you could pop in an SD card or a USB stick and then hit record. But before you buy this, know that there are some kinks and quirks to this that I'm still going to test out a little bit more in this video. But first, you guys want to see what kind of stuff we dug out from Carrie's old tapes. Are you excited to see what kind of stuff we managed to dig up? No. What do you think of the Christmas lights, by the way? I don't like I'll it. I'll just take it down. In my head, I thought those fairy lights might look kind of cool, but it looks stupid. Yeah. Oh, is that you? Yeah. That's you right there? <laughs> yeah. Playing soccer? Yeah. I didn't even know you played soccer. Do you know I used to play soccer? No. We're learning stuff about each other. Oh, look at this. Carrie just doing some vlogging. <laughs> Can we hear what you say? I would rather listen to it first. Okay, Carrie's gonna listen to this on her own. Like, you started vlogging way before maybe I did. You could show it without audio. <laughs> yeah, I'm so curious. <laughs> Are you gonna let me hear what you're saying? You look very like serious. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and this was be your dad motocrossing. Motocrossing is that a, th a verb? Is yeah. that your dad right there? In yeah. The blue? I think so. Oh yeah, number nine. That was his number. His favorite number. Oh, that's cool. You should send that to your dad. I think he'll like that. Yeah, he'll get a kick out of it for sure. So anyone with like a Gmail or a Google account has like a YouTube account, right? So I had Carrie log into her YouTube account where there's nothing there, but I just dumped all these files as unlisted files. So you can go ahead and share it with whoever you want. It's free, so might as well have it there. There's a lot though. I pulled four tapes and each tape had like two hours each. So there's like eight hours of stuff, but I'm happy we did it because now that it's been converted to a digital format, it will not degrade further from here. So. That's good. And we don't have to carry tapes around every yeah, time we move. <laughs> exactly. But here's the one thing that I think everyone should be doing is ask your close family, relatives, friends. Let me know if you have anything that looks like a tape at all, whether it's VHS, mini DV, anything that looks like a tape, send it my way. And I just kind of threw it out there, not expecting anything. I didn't actually expect her to have any tapes, but then <laughs> look at all this. I didn't even know that there was a high H camcorder in our house. And it's crazy because these go back before I was born, like 1985, 1986. That's kind of weird <laughs> to look at life before you existed. I've been tripping out. And look at this, even some cassette tapes just for audio, right? I definitely want to know what audio is recorded on here though, because this says Randy, who's my older brother, at three months from 1979. What? What is on here? I must find out. I still have lots of digitizing to do, but this is Christmas 1985. So this is four years before I was born. And oh my God. Look at and your my, mom. Yeah. And my Holy grandma. Crap. My grandma passed away about five years ago or something like that. But like, it's crazy seeing her just walk around like that. Look at that. My grandma hopped out of that RV like that. Oh my God. There's my mom, my sister, my brother, and my grandma. I was negative five years old then. This is 1985 and my mom was born in 1954. So she was, she's 31. That's my, my mom is my age right here. How weird is that? Think about your parents. You're like, oh yeah, they're older people. They're your parents. But I'm watching video of my mom at my age. That what? She already had a home. She was taking care of my brother and my sister and another kid on the way at, at my age. This is Randy's seventh birthday. My older brother that went to Thailand with us. Oh my God, look, he's tiny. And who's that? I don't know. That was scary though. Let's skip through now. <laughs> Giving us some serious side eye right there. Wait a second. My grandma's like my mom's age here. Whoa! 
Whoa! Now here's the thing, like if I never made an effort to digitize these tapes, my mom probably would have never dug into the basement to try to dig these up. And by the time we found them again next time, it might've been too late. So this is awesome. I'm so happy that we're able to preserve these files. Cause it's like wine, you know? The older they get, the finer and more, I don't know, something like that. I think I'm gonna just start filming my videos on this camera. So what's the difference between your camera and my camera? Well, my camera is mini DV, which is slightly newer, but this is Hi8, which has been around for longer. So oh, that's why all these tapes are before So that's my why you're time. playing everything on this camera. Are you glad that your boyfriend's a nerd and is digitizing all these old tapes? Yes. I'll be the historian of the family. All these batteries are so old that they literally powers the camera for like 20 seconds. Here, let me get the plug. Is it working? I think it is. Yeah. The timer's going. How you doing there? Whoa. This is actually a really convenient vlog setup. I would love for a good mirrorless camera to have this form factor. I mean, it just feels so good. And just look at that, holding it out here. Yeah, flip screen. Oh, look they're cute. Yes, this is an old video now. Look, from this old, is from, from high school. Yeah, the sound quality is probably pretty bad, but if we sync this sound quality into this, hey, look at this, can I use this? This is an acceptable vlogging camera. Should I just make a whole video on this camera? There's my camera right there, and there's my monitor where I'm filming myself. Whoa, look at this, I got a mirror effect. A mirror effect. Didn't they do like music videos like this and stuff? <laughs> I need to do a camera comparison. Which camera is the camera from 15 years ago? A or B? <laughs> <laughs> also, even if you don't have a Hi8 camcorder, if you have these tapes lying around, it might even be worth buying an old used one on eBay. I was looking around for them. Oh, and I saw some for like 50, 60 bucks. And usually on there, it says the description if it works well enough to at least digitize tapes. But if you do have one, definitely try the head cleaner first. Cause I think a majority of the time they'll fix your problem. But anyways, I got a lot of tapes to digitize and I also want to figure out the quirks on this thing before I officially give my thumbs up or down on this. So let's get to business. Hey Steve, these tapes were your time. Give us a little history lesson about your time and your tapes. My time and my tapes? Yeah. I mean, you were probably using these kinds of tapes, right? Yeah, but we had tapes before this too. Betamax oh. tapes and super, yeah, I don't super, even know. Super VHS, Betamax. I just want a history lesson. I'm not talking about trying to figure out how the Neanderthals. <laughs> and the dinosaurs came and they got too big and fat. What'd you do with all your tapes? Somewhere I still have a bunch of mini DV and beta tapes. You should digitize them just for like archival purposes. It was something I would have to probably do on my own. Privately? Because yeah, yeah. real, real. <laughs> there's some silly stuff. See, I mean, I will totally keep it safe. We I won't put any blackmail material on YouTube. I totally believe you. All right, finally, I have finished digitizing around 30 to 40 hours worth of old archived footage. It was honestly really nice having this displayed so that when you plug something in, it's just all built in. It was really a big part of the reason why I went for this unit over some of the others. It's because you don't require a computer to be hooked up to it or anything. It's a very simple all-in-one solution. It is not the cheapest solution. What is it, like 139 bucks? Some of the other solutions I was looking at are some USB ports. So instead you would actually plug it into a computer and capture the video using software. Haven't tried it myself, so can't speak too much on it, but definitely read the reviews, make sure it's compatible with your system. Now, some of the specific issues I had with this thing, my biggest, biggest issue was the files getting corrupted after I captured. So I'm gonna go ahead and start capturing this tape right here. And I noticed that if the signal gets interrupted, like I pull out this cable or sometimes if it's the end of the tape or whatever, you can actually corrupt it. If I go back to check on the file, see there's a little sad face on there. You see that it means that file is corrupt. So let's say you were capturing a clip for an hour and then something goes wrong with the connection or whatever, then you end up with a corrupt file. And that was the most frustrating part of all of it because the signal can get lost, whether it's a slight disconnection or sometimes when the tapes reach the end. And sometimes the tapes would just do something weird because they're so old that they'll skip a point or something like that. That was super frustrating.
frustrating. So one of the first things you definitely want to go do is go into the menu and see this signal loss detection. Make sure you have a check mark next to that. But even after you turn that on, the files still do corrupt. So best way to do it is to stop the recording before the tape ends. It's an extra step. It's kind of a hassle. But as long as you're the one that stops the recording, the files have been good. Another issue I did see a few times was that the audio sync would be completely off at the end of the tape. So the video would start off perfectly in sync with the video and audio. And by the end of it, it would just be off. So at some point in the video, there would be a big gap of either no audio or the audio would skip ahead. Another thing I did notice with the finalized files was that Premiere did not seem to love these files. Now, I don't want to get too much into it because I don't know if it's an issue with Adobe Premiere or if it's an issue with the files that this thing generates. But what would happen is I would load up a file and let's say it's an hour long clip. When I load it into Premiere, it might see it as a 30 minute clip or 45 minute clip. It just wouldn't see that last chunk of the video. But the videos play in full if you open it up in you know quick time player or even if you upload it straight to YouTube, it would see the whole clip. So a few times I did just have to run the clips through a random conversion so that Premiere would just see the whole video clip. But again, not 100% sure if that was an issue with Adobe Premiere, my editing software or this. But aside from those speed bumps, I'm really glad I have this thing and I actually want to hand this off to one of you guys. So let me know in the comments if you guys have some tapes you want to digitize. I'll send it out to one of you and it'd be cool if whoever I send it out to, you sent it out to another person. Then you sent it out to another person and it just kept going and a bunch of people had digitized tapes. So that'd be cool. But I don't know, that sounds like an operation that seems cool, but in, in practice, it's a little complicated. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Yeah, let's see right. how far we can make this choo-choo train go. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want this and if you're willing to pass it on afterwards. And we'll send this around town a little bit. But otherwise, I'll go ahead and throw a link to this in the description. And yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on simple ways to convert analog tapes to digital, let me know in the comments. Or some of your favorite bands from the 80s, 70s, 60s. What direction are you taking this video, Sam? I just want to learn more about history, Gene. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been a trip watching some of these old videos. I even sent some of these clips to my dad and you want to know what he said this is very valuable you did a good job i got a pat in the head from my pops when was the last time your dad said good job to you huh let's not talk about that right now gene <laughs> <laughs> should i read some comments no just send it right here just send it okay